first started up my bookshop, people thought I was mad because they said that with computers nobody's wanting to won't, won't buy books because they um, would just be using computers. But I didn't take any notice, and I'm still here after nearly 20 years, and um, I just went on my own instinct. Because there must be more than me who like books. <laughs> Well, we came to Lincoln because I was posted here several years ago when I was uh, serving with the army. And when we were looking for somewhere to settle down on a more permanent basis a few years later, we decided we liked Lincoln. It was one of the few parts of England that we'd served together in our military careers. We enjoyed it, we liked it, so we, we settled down and bought a house. The shop's been going as a sweet shop for 16 years. I had a wholesale business before I had the shop. and. Always wanted to buy it ever since we started supplying it 16 years ago and for the last sort of two and a half years I've uh, managed to fulfil that and sold the wholesale business uh, to fund buying the shop. I used to walk by and it had been empty for a long time and I saw all the shelves in here and I thought I was running out of space at home to put all my books so I thought it would fit on these shelves and I thought it might be a good idea to open a bookshop. So I did. Well, I've been a long-standing customer on and off over the years of the shop. In a casual conversation with the previous owners, I found out that they were retiring and they were looking to sell up the business. So I expressed an interest in taking it on and here I am now running my own shop. Running a shop like this very much is a lifestyle because it's more or less a full-time business. We're in almost every day of the week in one way or another. If we're not serving behind the counter, then we're ordering stock or we're doing bank runs or we're doing all sorts of things. So uh, it's, it's very much a lifestyle job. There are certain key skills, management skills, that you can apply to anywhere, but the actual business side of it is something that's completely new to me. So that has been a, a bit of a challenge, I think, to, to rise to. The way I see it, if I can own a business, anyone can own one. What it does need though is a certain amount of dedication of time and effort because you're not working set hours and you're not working to a boss who, who's giving you direction all the time. There's a lot more initiative involved than working maybe in a structured organisation. I've got lots of people coming in my shop asking me if I can employ them. You know, they might have finished at university and they can't get a job. I left school at 14 on a Friday and I was working on a Monday. You don't really need any qualifications really. I think it's most of it's common sense. I just had the basic GCSEs when I first left school. It's all about if your heart's in it really. What has struck me is the number of people who work around this area in the Bailgate who said how nice it is to work here and how the Bailgate area is a little bit like a village within the city. It's a very small, tight-knit community, everybody enjoys working together, and the people who come here, quite often you'll see the same people walking up and down the streets, doing a bit of shopping, visiting the tourist sites and so on. I think we're fairly unique really compared to other sweet shops. Our area is all history, like this building, over 650 years old, and I think our little sweet shop here is just fantastic for the area we're in. Uh, so I think uh, people come in here with a smile on their face and uh, as they walk in and they walk out with a better smile on their face with a bag of sweets in their hands. I think one thing that we should emphasise that we can do here on these high streets is that we are providing a small specialist service and a personal service. Quite often people will come into this shop and they'll spend two minutes buying something but 10 or 15 minutes just chatting about what it is they want to buy beforehand. So in terms of price we can't compete with the supermarkets but what we can compete with is the range and the quality of both our service and our goods. Well a lot of my books are out of print, I can't really get them new. Also the cheapness as well because I usually charge about £2 for a book. I can't see how it's cheaper to buy online if you can buy a book for a couple of pounds and not have to wait for the postman, not have to take ages looking on the internet when you can walk into a, a bookshop and find it there. We can guarantee 95% of our products are all made in this country and I don't think the average or the normal sweet shop or the normal supermarket could, uh, could say that.
presentations, everything. You know, we've got candy canes on the ceiling. I know it's Christmas now, but we have candy canes on our ceiling all year round. So it's like Christmas in the shop every day. <laughs> Being brought up in the war, we didn't have much to read. So I used to read everything I could get hold of. Mostly the daily paper, which was quite exciting with the war being on at the time. I never threw a book away. Um, even if it's falling to bits with no backs on, I don't always put them in the shop. I haven't really counted them, but there must be about 5,000 in here, and I've probably got about 10,000 upstairs. <laughs> We're having the best year that the shop's ever had so far this year. I think people come to sweets to um, comfort eating, really. Everyone's got a pound in the pocket for a, for a bag of sweets. When I met the guy who bought it, or started it off 16 years ago, he was living rough in the shop, no heating, nothing really, all just full of cobwebs, and he says, I'm going to turn it into a sweet shop, and six months later, he did do, and he rang me up and we started from then. And the shop just grew and grew and grew over the years. We knew how much he was spending with us. And I always fancied it after he got it up and running, and that's how it all started. And uh, yeah, I'm sort of living, as you say, I can probably I'm living my dream that I've wanted for the last sort of well 13 years before I actually bought it. So uh, it's really good. You can take a book on the train, a plane, read it in the bath, read a few pages in bed before you go to sleep. You know, people buy books off me and then sell them on the internet. Sometimes they bought a book for two pound fifty and sold it for three hundred and fifty pound. But it doesn't worry me because I haven't got the time and I can't be bothered to research what a book's value is, you know. There's millions of people unemployed and they don't really know how to get a job. And I think a lot of people don't think about being self-employed and making a, a living out of a hobby sort of thing. I didn't take over an existing business, I created a new one. I think if you've got the right qualities to be able to do that, then it's a fantastic job because you're working for yourself, you're your own boss, uh, unless you're married of course. So I'm not seeing this as a long-term career that's going to make a lifetime for me. I would say I'm looking at about 10 years to run it, to make a little bit of extra money and to enjoy myself, provide a service to the existing customers and build on a new customer base. And then I would think in about 10 years time, I'll probably look at uh, selling it on to somebody else to continue the business and retire completely. I think we're going strong still now. I think even in the so-called recession that uh, the whole country's in at the moment, for, for my future, um, I fancy being for another 10 years here. We've been th only three here, but um, you know, I'm, I'm not getting any younger now, but my children hopefully will take over the empire. So yeah, I think uh, the future's looking good. Well, I'm well into my 70s now and um... I don't really want to retire, so I'll probably still be here, unless I get ill. But I've always been um, fit and healthy, so I can't see me retiring at all. Not. <laughs>